Yeah. You got too many yeah. things to play? Oh, okay. I get it. Wednesday evening is canceled because of the weather. Uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs> I guess that's all. Are there any? Oh yes, we're having a chili supper on the last Sunday of this month because we missed the fifth Sunday in January, so we're going to do the fifth Sunday in uh, no in December. We missed the fifth Sunday in December because that was Christmas, uh, New Year's Eve. So we're having it on the fourth Sunday, but we're calling it the fifth Sunday. You figure that, okay? Are there any other announcements I may have missed? Okay, well, let's begin our worship service. Uh, if you'll stand and let us do the call to worship. The voice of God calls to us. Are you listening? Speak, Lord, your servants are listening. The hands of God beckon us. Are you paying attention? Show us, Lord, your servants are paying attention. The love of God asks us, are you ready to follow? I ask, Lord, and we use your servants to follow. Come, let us worship the God whose tenacious love never stops calling and beckoning and asking us to follow. Thanks be to God. Amen. Remain standing for a cornerstone.
Okay, if the kids want to come up and see me. All right, I'll come on up. All right, good morning. All right, so I know y'all just sat, but y'all are gonna stand real quick. Okay, y'all ready? Y'all are stand. We are going to play follow the leader. Who knows how to play follow the leader? Okay, so, <laughs> yeah? All right, so y'all are gonna follow me, okay? So wherever I go, you're gonna follow me, okay? All right, let's go. Following the leader, the leader, the leader. Following the leader, wherever I go. <laughs> morning comes from Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind, and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. 
it is so high that I cannot attain it. For it was you who formed my inward parts, who knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intimately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them, they are more than the sand. I come to the end, I am still with you. Word of the Lord, be to God. Amen. <clears throat> Pray with me. God, you know our thoughts, our inmost being, since you created us. We are always searching for companionship beyond our limited knowledge of you. You have instilled in us a desire to know you and to give meaning to our lives. And in our relationship with you, we ask for your intervention to heal the predicaments that we find ourselves in at all times. Each time we stray, you are saddened, but you are always walking with us even though we can't sense your presence. You, O oh Lord, know the, the pain we humans face because you came to earth as a, a man and experienced the joys and trials we mortals contend with. Some in our midst this day need to feel your presence in their lives as they traverse illnesses, pains, both physical and spiritual, and situations beyond their control. Let each of us know that you are right there next to us and supporting us. Let us be your hands and feet to surround each other with your loving presence. We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus, who taught us how to pray by saying, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us on to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom.
proclaim your word today. And may we all open our ears so that you may hear you speaking to us. Amen. Amen. Well, I've titled this sermon, Come and See. But you'll find out why in just a little while when I read the next scripture. But anyway. In the Psalms that we just heard Julia read, the psalmist acknowledges that God knows us intimately. Oh, oh that could be scary. <laughs> you and I have friends and acquaintances. We all know people who know us in part, what we allow them to see, that is, uh, what our spouse knows, perhaps more deeply than our friends, but still, they don't know all our thoughts, our feelings, unless we share with them. And still, we might not know everything that they are thinking or doing or have done. God is the only one who knows us fully. When we're born, it's interesting to know that God has knitted us in the womb. God has placed, you know, one of the first things you do, notice when you, you know, I did this with my daughter when she was born. Not so much with my sons because I was so nervous. But anyway, when my daughter was born, I counted all her toes and fingers to make sure they were all there. And she had two eyes and two ears. God knew that even before she was born. God knew exactly what she was like before she was born. God is there when they were conceived and then as we grow. But even though as we grow through childhood, adolescence, and into adulthood, God knows every thought, every action that we do, even before we do it. Oh, that's so scary. Every secret thought and emotion God knows us and through God's experiences as a man, he can empathize with us. God can empathize with us. It's over here. To be known so thoroughly, that's really scary. And yet it is a comfort that God knows us so intimately that the creator of the universe wants to know us, wants to have a personal relationship with each and one of us sitting here today. How do we begin that relationship? Well, let's hear the gospel reading and then we'll proceed. And it's marked here somewhere. Okay, there we are. This is from the gospel of John. Uh, Pastor said last week that we would have a series on uh, the Gospel of Mark, but the lectionary chose to deviate from that, and this week, uh, next week, they'll go back to Mark, but this week, they're going to go with uh, John. Uh, John 1, verses uh, 43 to 51. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <coughs> well, we just heard of how Philip invited Nathaniel, but just before that, Jesus just told Philip, 
follow me. And he did. But he went and found Nathaniel. And he told Nathaniel, come and see the Messiah. And Nathaniel thought of the place, the community. Sometimes we think of the place and the community where people are. And he said, where Jesus grew up, uh, to doubt that anyone associated with Nazareth would amount to any would not amount to anything. Oh, <coughs> didn't write that down, did I? <laughs> Do we associate people born in a certain place as not amounting to anything? That's what Nathaniel thought about anybody born or living in Nazareth. Ooh. As United Methodist <coughs> clergy, uh, especially those in the ordained elder track. I'm an ordained deacon, so I didn't, I, I didn't move around as much as the clergy did. But many of those who move from community to community, uh, they begin to say, well, where is home? Where is my home base? And it turns out that they figure it's the home base where they are at the time. And the community is the people in that particular area, in that particular charge, that particular church. That is their family. That is their home. Nathaniel now joined Jesus' family as he began to follow Jesus, became one of his disciples uh, when he accepted that invitation of Philip to come and see. Who has invited you to come and see Christ? Well, let me uh, bore you with a few people in my life who have encouraged me along my journey in faith. You may relate to some of the same types of people in your own lives. So I'm going to bore you. First, there's my mom and dad. Well, that seems okay. Well, my mom, she made sure that we all went to Sunday school every week. My dad did too. My dad was born in Chile of missionary parents. So he made sure that we all attended church every Sunday. And we sat uh, the second pew right back here so that they could watch us from the choir loft. And if we misbehaved, we'd hear about that. But mom made sure that we went to Sunday school. She signed us up for vacation Bible school because she was going to teach there. She also made sure, and my dad supported her in sending us off to church camps. Uh, my church camp, since I was in the New Mexico Conference, we went up to Sacramento Methodist Assembly in <coughs> New Mexico. I don't know if they really wanted us to go to church camp or just get out of the house, but anyway. <laughs> uh, Anyway, he supported us in that faith. And while we were there, I met a man, uh, Skipper Hall. Skipper Hall was the, I guess, the camp director. He was a, an ordained minister, had been assigned there as the executive uh, uh, for that camp. And he had a wonderful influence on my life by interpreting some of the scriptures for me and saying that God has a plan for me. When I got back home, uh, well, this was, you know, early on in my life, and then there was a man and woman, Truman and Doreen uh, McCreelis. My mom and dad uh, said, you're going to MYF on Sunday evening. I said, what do you mean I have to miss the wonderful world of Disney? Yes, you have to go in at least four weeks. Oh my goodness. That was torture for me. I got to miss having that southern made donut that my dad always had on Sunday nights. But Doreen and uh, Truman McCreelis were the sponsors of the MYF. And they stayed with us for the six years that we went from junior high through high school 
uh, every Sunday evening. They took us to district events. Uh, Truman was even the teacher in the seniors in the high school class. And Truman uh, was just a, a, a person who had a print shop. And yet he dedicated his life to helping others grow and to know uh, Jesus Christ. Oh, the faithfulness of those people. And then when I got off to college, that first year I decided to join a social club at McMurray College at that time, now it's McMurray University. Did not allow fraternities, but we had social clubs. It's about the same thing. But Jimmy Cameron was my big brother, and he came and talked to me one day, and he said, Richard, you're driving everybody away from you because you're so sarcastic. I had never thought of that my talking and what I said would be so sarcastic. I had to watch that. I still have to watch. I still am a little bit sarcastic. Julia, you don't have to say anything. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, sometimes I still am, and that tendency hasn't left me. Uh, but he left. And then in that college, my sophomore year in college, had a professor, a speech professor, Carolyn Couch Blair. She taught me and said with me that my sophomore year, because I doubted that there was even a God. I said, there is no God. There is uh, nothing but scientific uh, happenings, how all of this came into being. She walked me through all of that throughout the, the year I was a sophomore. Oh, I could not have been more blessed to have had a Christian a professor. Uh, of course, that was a Methodist school, so I guess that would be right. And then when I finally arrived at St. Peter's United Methodist Church in Katy, Jim Foster was a pastor there uh, shortly after I got there. And he allowed me to conduct uh, confirmation classes. And he also said, uh, well, maybe you can also help with the children's nurseries, the Sunday school classes for youth and children and adults. So I was put in charge of the educational ministries of St. Uh, Peter's United Methodist Church. And then uh, he finally said, but it's just too much for him to continue doing the confirmation classes, so would you, would I be willing to do that? Well, I studied up and I, I said yes. Well, Reverend Gail Ford Smith came after Jim Foster left to go to the conference office, and uh, she encouraged me to continue with those confirmation classes and to work in conference activities. Well, you know, when I got out of college, I thought, I'm supposed to be a teacher. Any of you in here I see are teachers. I know some of you are. And I thought, oh, I've got to work with youth. I'll go to be a uh, teacher in high school. So I went to Artesia, New Mexico, taught sophomore English. That was a trial. And then I got a call from my local pastor, the pastor where I grew up. He said, come, uh, you don't have a choice, <laughs> really. He said, come and, and interview on Friday evening after you get out of school, come over here to Odessa again and interview for Christian education position. No, 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 I'm not supposed to do that. I, I'm not supposed to work with youth. Well, he, uh, he invited me to come back, and I became a Christian educator in First United Methodist Church in Odessa, Texas. I went to a conference up in Boston, Christian Educators Fellowship Conference, 
it was so enlightening. I realized then that I could be serving God in Christian education. I did not have to be an ordained uh, minister at the time. I could become a diaconal minister. Well, so notice a couple of ways that God started to prepare me for working in the church. And you know those confirmation classes I told you they allowed me to teach at St. Peter's? Over the years, I counted it up and I, I, I lost count over 700. 700 sixth graders uh, that went through confirmation classes there at St. Peter's and we were able to make sure that they knew that they confirmed their baptism that was said of them as an infant. Or maybe some of them had not been baptized because they grew up in a family where they felt like uh, baptism was only good if you knew what you were saying. So some people had to be baptized. Oh, it was so much fun. We did a whole year starting in September and ending in May uh, with confirmation classes and uh, those sixth graders and their parents, some of the parents came to help because one class was 90, 90 kids on roll. Uh, that's more than what's sitting in here today. Then I was privileged to offer disciple Bible studies. You know, during the discussion of the scriptures, the Holy Spirit began to take hold of my life and to those in the, the discussion groups out following the reading of the scriptures and the studying of them leading up to that week uh, and uh, some of the videos that we saw about that. And I felt the Holy Spirit moving within us in that hour and a half that we had uh, each week. 34 weeks of studying the, the scriptures uh, going through the Bible, all the way through the Bible. Oh, the Bible is such a great word of God that we all need to read and, and talk with each other about the scriptures that we read. Well, since uh, Gail Ford Smith allowed me to work in the conference, I was able to work with the Greater Houston uh, Leadership Education School where we trained Sunday school teachers from different churches who would come to this leadership school. And also, I became a camp counselor up at Lakeview, camp counselor and then finally a director of some of the uh, things up there. God had a lot in store for me just because of these people in my life that had told me about Jesus Christ and what Jesus might have for me. You may have people in your life who have led you to Jesus and talked to you about what it means to be a Christian. And how can you follow Christ in your daily life? How can you do that through your work in all those things. I'm not going to read it, but some of you may also know uh, we follow the lectionary, and that's what some of these scriptures are about. But I looked at 1 Samuel uh, chapter 3. Uh, you may sometimes want to read through that. But Samuel was, uh, he was a young boy, probably 12, 13 years old. His mother, Hannah had dedicated him, if she could get pregnant and have a son, she would dedicate him to the church, to the temple. And so he was raised in the temple by Eli uh, from the young age of probably six or nine months old until uh, this time. Well, they went to sleep. And when they were there, Samuel heard his name being called Samuel. So he ran in to check with Eli, and Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back and go to bed. Samuel heard his name called again. Samuel! Samuel ran into Eli and said, Here I am, Eli. 
Did you call? I didn't call you. Go back and go to bed. Third time he heard his name called, Samuel. He ran into Eli. Eli realized that it was not him, but probably God calling. So he said, go back, and if you hear that voice again, say, here am I. Samuel went back, and when he heard God calling, this time he said, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, here I am. He became one of the best, or one of the best known prophets in the Old Testament, Samuel. Well, you know, not all of us can have that experience of having God actually call us by name. Remember last week, Reverend Pat uh, said he kept sensing God calling him. He kept saying, no, no. At first I thought God wanted me to teach in high school. That's me. And relate to the youth. But it was in the church where I could lead young people and adults in their faith walk with the Lord. Where do you see or sense God calling and leading you? Have you sensed God calling and leading you in some way? These are some of the God's Spirit. Some of the hymns that we sang uh, so far have been that. So let us uh, pray uh, as we conclude this time. God, you are always calling us your children. And wanting us to be in a relationship with you. Often we are afraid to become intimate with you for fear you might ask us to expand our territory as Jabez asked. Whatever we choose in life, may we do it for your glory and honor. May you also have in mind for us whatever you'd like. And even though it may be difficult, Lord, we know that you'll be with us, walking with us, guiding us each step of the way. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you may come into our lives, help us, each and every one of us, to respond when you call us. And now, as we seek to do your bidding, we also ask that you bless the giving of our tithes and offerings this day, so that we may invite others to know you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now will the ushers please, uh, people taking off the altar, will you come forward? Uh, James and Jamie, whoever else is going to help. And I think we have... Charlie. Charlie. Charlie, you're, you're singing now? Yes. Okay. <laughs>
face that you got away with something. But but then inside of you, spilling up her trash, your life is for how I'm chatting. Undeniable, monumental, like the Eiffel. Uncontrollable, let the joy flow through. Get it over, pretty, pretty, please. Let me see your hands in the air with you. I just see it's falling out of life. Don't shut it out, celebrate it. When you can't articulate, just say it ain't no place. Exercise for today. <laughs> sit, stand, sit, stand. Okay. Any any joys or concerns? Zeta? Um, not gonna describe what happened, but something real bad happened Wednesday morning with me and my roommates, and we're gonna need lots of prayer. And uh, because of it, I moved back here now, so I'll be here every Sunday. Um, and I also need prayer for the job search because I have to find a new job. Job search and for? Prayer for me what? and my roommates over this. You situation. and your roommates. Okay. Any other prayer? Concern, joys or concerns? For Myra and Felix. Yes. Myra. Micah. Okay. Myra. 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 Oh, she's not here. Oh. She did what? Broke her wrist? Oh my goodness. She fell, I think. Ooh. That's all awesome. Oh, terrible. Any other joys or concerns? Yeah. Let's go to the Lord again in prayer, shall we? Most gracious Heavenly Father, you know us in, inward and outward. And we ask especially for uh, those in our congregation who need your uh, support and your help right now. For Zeta and his roommates, uh, we especially ask uh, your support in that and also finding a job. For Mara, who broke her wrist, we ask that you'll be with her and help her those uh, fractures to heal quickly. We give you thanks, O oh Lord, that you are with us each and every time, and that uh, now winter has come, and so we are making adjustments down here in the south. We give you thanks, O oh Lord, for everything that you give to us day by day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Am